SpaceX Starship, IFT-3, what happened? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking about the IFT3. The good, the bad, the positive, the negative. What happened with ITF3? I think it was very positive in the end, but there was some negative stuff too that we want to talk about. Now, there was a good article, like a short synopsis of what happened over on Space News. I want to read some of that to you. Then, of course, I want to give you my commentary as I always do. And then I want to hear from you, which is the most important thing down below. What do you think about all of this? So before we get into this article, I just want to say that if you enjoy this content, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you wanna just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content, I have about 250, 255 videos just on Starlink over the last 29 months. I'll put a playlist right here. You can click on that when you're done watching this video. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. They're 100% free just for you being here. And if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina, or you could use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN to make it very simple for you. And you'll get 15% off, additional percent off at checkout. Now that all the housekeeping is done, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX Starship vehicle lifted off on its third test flight on March 14th, yesterday, making significant progress compared to its first two by achieving most of its planned test milestones. And it did. Absolutely the case. The liftoff was delayed by nearly an hour and a half because of ships in restricted waters offshore. SpaceX reported no technical issues during the countdown. The Super Heavy booster fired all 33 of its Raptor engines for nearly three minutes before executing hot staging, where Starship separates from Super Heavy by igniting its engines. So in short, hot staging is basically the six vacuum engines that are on the Starship ignite and they kind of point outward a little bit so they're not like blasting into super heavy but they kind of angle a little bit out and it pushes the starship away from the booster rocket it ends up working out a lot better the russians have been doing this for decades i don't know why they didn't start doing it from the beginning but now they are i think that's awesome anyways the article continues upon re-entry the super heavy booster attempted a soft splashdown we talked about this in the live in the gulf of mexico but was unsuccessful at 462 meters above the ocean, Super Heavy broke apart, basically self-destructed. They blew it up. And I think that a lot of it has to do with the gimbling system in it. I think that one of the engines didn't fire up or the gimbal wasn't working properly where it could actually adjust the landing and it probably got a little bit off, cockeyed, whatever. And if they do not have control over that spacecraft, over that booster, they're going to detonate it. That's just simply how it works, right? You have to have control over something that big that has hundreds of thousands of pounds of propellant on board, right? You're not gonna want that thing to just go off wherever it wants to. So you're going to have to blow it up. And that's what they did, in my personal opinion. Either it does it automatically once it realizes that it no longer has control, right? Or they do it from the ground, they hit the red button and boom, either which way. The article continues, the Starship's upper stage performed its burn and unlike the IFT-2, it was able to place itself into the planned suborbital trajectory. While in space, SpaceX opened the payload bay door or the PEZ dispenser, as we always call it, that will be used on later Starship missions to deploy Starlink satellites. 
This is the exciting part here. Remember, when that door opens and closes properly, that means at that point of time, it could have opened and then, like a Pez dispenser, started shooting out Starlink satellites. So even though in the end, the mission wasn't successful, I'll get into that before the end of this video, at that point, it was still working properly. So they could have actually placed, let's say 200 of the massive 2.0 maxis or 3.0 satellites into orbit, even on this flight. That's very, very important, very important. Anyways, once again, it continues. It also successfully performed an in-space propellant transfer demonstration as part of the NASA contract where it would be moving propellant from one tank within the vehicle to another. I've talked to you guys about this in the last video, also during the live. What's important about this is to be able to move propellant from one tank to another this means that they will also, under zero gravity, be able to move propellant from one vehicle to the next. That means that they'll be able to launch a Starship into space and now load it up fully fueled, almost like a gas station in space. And then later on, spacecraft could kind of pull up, dock, <laughs> refuel, and then fly off. So this is very important when we talk about going to the moon or going to Mars. We need some type of gas station because remember, it takes a lot of propellant to break the Earth's gravitational pull. But once you're in space at zero gravity, it doesn't take a lot of propellant to go anywhere, right? So this is once again, extremely important and NASA wanted to make sure that they could do it and they proved that they were able to. So that's awesome. SpaceX had planned to perform a brief relight of a Raptor engine on Starship about 40 minutes after liftoff. But the company said on the webcast that the test was skipped because the vehicle's roll rates. When we were watching the video of what was going on here, I remember saying during the live, I said, you know, that thing should not be rolling that much, all right, in my personal opinion. And then when we looked at it, we're like, well, Maybe it's looking like it's rolling, but the camera is actually rotating. Eh, I don't know. I think the thing was rolling out of control. And the reason being is they're talking about roll rates and not being able to ignite the engine. Now that makes sense because if the thing is rolling and you don't know where it's pointing and then you ignite engines going forward more, you don't know where it's gonna go. Is it going down? Is it going up? Is it going the wrong direction? This will absolutely affect the final landing point where it crash lands into the ocean. That's a problem. So they did not ignite the engine. So they don't know if those vacuum engines will actually ignite as of yet in space. They'll have to do that on IFT4. I'll get into that once again in just a second. Now, when I was watching this video and I was seeing this rolling, there was something that I pointed out that I think is mission critical here. And what I saw was there was little dots and those dots were basically tiles that were missing from the belly of the vehicle. Now this is coming from someone that's coming from the space shuttle days. I remember that when they would lose tiles, it would end up being a very bad thing. They were able to lose a certain number of tiles in a certain location, but in other locations that are mission critical, well, they can't lose tiles because if they do, the ship could explode on re-entry due to heat. Several minutes later, the vehicle started re-entry. A camera mounted on Starship provided dramatic images of the re-entry relayed through Starlink satellites. So they had a Starlink uplink on the Starship that was communicating or relaying the telemetry, the data, the photos, the video, right back down to the ground through a Starlink satellite. Very, very cool. Telemetry was lost 49 and a half minutes after liftoff when the vehicle was descending through an altitude of 65 kilometers. Now, when I saw that and I saw that telemetry stop, at 65 kilometers, there was no more information. It wasn't going up, wasn't going down, no speed, no altitude, no nothing. And when that happened, I said, you know, guys, I think that's it. I think that is it. 
No telemetry is not a good thing. The article continues by saying SpaceX later on said on the webcast that it lost contact through both its own Starlink satellites as well as through the NASA's TDRSS data relay satellites at the same time, speculating that the vehicle may have broken up. And I think that's exactly what happened. I think at 65 kilometers, the thing went boom. Now, the question is, did it go boom on its own or was it self-destructed from the ground? Remember, these things have so many sensors on board. If it feels that it is not doing what it should be doing and it's off, it could self-destruct automatically by itself. Or they can hit the red button and blow the thing up. So it's like safety upon safety upon safety. Anything that goes into the air or under the ocean have multiple redundancy. Everything right? You don't have one. One is none. Two is one. Most of the time you have three of anything of importance on an aircraft or anything that's sea bearing. That's just the way it is. Okay. You have to have that. Like I said before, roll rate. They said that the roll rate, there was something wrong with roll rates, right? The roll rates were too high or there's something with roll rate. And that's why they didn't ignite that engine. And like I told you, I think that was the reason. I think that could have been one of the causes for failure. What could that have possibly be? Well, number one, maybe it wasn't coming in belly first like it was originally. Now in the photos we can see or in the video, it was coming in nicely, belly first, and we can see those tiles, those heat tiles, those ceramic tiles, right? Taking the brunt of it. You could see the plasma pouring off it. The heat of like, I don't know, whatever it is, like 2800 Kelvin. Let me know if I'm wrong. It's something just absurd, right? It'll just melt everything. So. The understanding here is even with the space shuttle, when it comes in, it always came in. Now remember the space shuttle had wings. It was like a plane, right? So it would direct itself through its flaps and whatnot to come in at an angle like this, right? It wouldn't come in nose first. It would come in belly first like this. Why? Because the entire underside of it was full of these plates or these ceramic tiles, the heat shielding. All right. So the same thing holds true here with this vehicle. The underbelly of it is full of those black tiles, but the top of it isn't. So if this thing was coming in like this, as it should, and now it started rolling. Okay. And now the backside, it started heating up. It's going to blow up. That's just it. Okay. That is a problem. So it could have been a steering issue, right? With one of those flaps. They have those three massive flaps, right? And those things have actuators in them. Chances are there's probably three actuators. Maybe three actuators went bad on one of these flaps or maybe a flap broke off or there's something, they'll figure that out, okay? But one of those steering flaps were obviously not working or not working properly. So the roll rate was obviously not right. So they did not fire off the engine in space to see if it would actually work. One of those vacuum engines. So that was number one. It could have had something to do with that. Also, like I said before, we saw that there was missing tiles on the underbelly. Now, how many of those tiles can be missing and in what location before the craft blows up? Like I told you before, that's what ended up happening with one of the space shuttles. So once again, it could have been too many heat tiles were missing, number one or most likely one of the actuators or one of those flaps ended up not working properly and they weren't able to control the descent and it burned up, okay? Or they blew it up because they no longer had control, either which way. Now bear in mind, according to the FAA, there was like 100,000 kilograms of propellant on the Starship before crash landing into the ocean. So no matter what, you're talking about 100 thousand kilograms of propellant still on board because the FAA said that that was what's going to happen when it actually crash landed. They take that into consideration when they do their environmental assessment, which they're going to have to do once again. They're going to go over the ocean. They're going to see what the debris field looks like. According to what the FAA said is that the chunks were going to be so large that it was going to plant itself into the bottom of the ocean. It's not going to be an issue, but since it blew up, at 65 kilometers, well, I don't know, maybe there'll be smaller pieces that they're gonna have to recover that are floating around now, who knows? So to come full circle, there's positives and negatives with this flight, IFT3. The positives, number one, of course, is hot staging worked again, just like the Russians do. Hot staging 
is perfect, all right? Being able to get that super heavy and the starship away from one another, doing it properly without burning either one of them up, worked perfectly. So hot staging is pretty much done. It's working. Also, being able to transfer fuel on orbit is a big thing. That makes NASA very happy, very happy. Also, the Pez dispenser worked. It was able to open that bay, that door, where those satellites are going to be pushed out like Pez in the not so distant future. Now, as far as the negatives go, there's gonna be negatives. Number one would be those tiles, those damn tiles, those tiles, those heat tiles, those ceramic tiles have been a problem way back since the space shuttle. And they're using them here. And I don't know if there's any other option. I was thinking about this. So you have all of these little tiles. How about if you had just one big ass tile that is molded in the shape that it needs to be. And it's just stuck on like this. Maybe 10 of them, instead of like thousands of these little octagon tiles. Because as we can see in the pictures, in the video, they popped off. So we really don't know how many ended up popping off, but it is an issue. So maybe, maybe there's 10 of these plates that go on. The only problem with that is, is well, if one of those plates fail, the thing is gonna explode, right? Whereas with the little tiles, you can lose a few and maybe get by. But of course, it depends on where those tiles are located. So that's problem number one. Number two, of course, is steering. I think that one of the flaps went bad or the actuator in one of the flaps. So either a flap ended up bent or broken off or the actuators in them were not working properly or failed altogether because now all of a sudden it could not control. And I believe there's three of them, right? To be able to control its yaw, its roll, and be able to come in at the right angle. Because if it comes in like this, it's exploding. If it comes in back first or side first, it's exploding. It has to come in belly first and at an angle like this. That's the only way. Now, I guess alternatively, you can put tile all the way around the thing, and then if it came in back first, you're still okay, but are you really okay? Because you, at this point, lack control anyways. So I guess it makes sense to only put them on the underbelly, but maybe they need to be the big ones, like I'm speculating. Is that a possibility? Anyone out there that's an engineer, let me know. Is that possible? Also, the relight of a vacuum engine, that was not able to be performed, and the reason being, roll rate. It was already off, something was wrong. So they need to do that in the next IFT4. They need to check that out and see if they can reignite one of those vacuum engines in a vacuum, <laughs> in space. That's very important. And then finally, I think moving into IFT4 is that they're gonna have to try out that Pez dispenser. Even instead of launching out maybe a satellite, maybe they're launching something else out. Maybe like a Tesla Roadster. <laughs> that was his payload. He ended up launching a car into orbit. <sighs> Elon, Elon. Anyways, guys, what do you think about all this? I personally think before the end of this year, third, fourth quarter, probably fourth quarter, we're going to see SpaceX Starlink version threes or the 2.0 maxis, as I call them, in orbit. Maybe a few hundred of them, maybe four or 500 of them. It depends on how many launches they're going to be able to achieve. They're trying to get one launch every single month going forward, a total of nine launches. That will not happen. The FAA will never allow that to happen because of how long they drag their feet. We know that. But if they could launch maybe another four, that would be pretty good because by the fourth one, maybe even by the third one, they're going to put satellites in orbit. I guarantee you because they could have put satellites in orbit this time, even though the final outcome was a failure, it blew up, but it was perfectly fine until that point. It was perfectly fine when it opened its payload doors or that Pez dispenser. So once again, what do you think? Down below, let's have this discussion. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, like I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Check out my merchandise and of course my teas pick something up. I would appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.